When we say that the music of Johann Sebastian Bach is mathematical, we are not using a metaphor. We are describing a functional system. His work operates with the coherence of a logical system, complete with rules, axioms, and predictable structures. To fully understand this claim, we are going to break it down into three distinct, verifiable layers. First, in the upcoming section, we will place ourselves in Bach's intellectual context to understand why his vision of order was different from his contemporaries. Next, we will analyze the core of his method, counterpoint, and I will demonstrate how it functions as a system of geometric transformations. Finally, we will explore what modern science has revealed about his music, uncovering patterns like fractals that explain its deep connection to the natural world. To begin, let's step into Bach's era to understand his unique approach to order in music. His mindset stood in stark contrast to the mainstream enlightenment, represented by figures like Lorenz Misler, who founded a Society of Musical Sciences. Misler's goal was to rationalize music, to uncover its universal laws through reason and mathematics, much like a physical science. Bach's resistance to joining the society for nearly a decade reveals a fundamental philosophical disagreement. His personal library was filled with theological texts, not the rationalist philosophers Misler admired. For Bach, order did not emanate from human reason, but was a reflection of divine order. Music was a way to access that perfection, not through abstract speculation, but through the absolute mastery of the craft of counterpoint, which he considered a sacred discipline. When he finally joined, his contribution was not a theoretical treatise, but a powerful demonstration. He submitted works of overwhelming logical complexity, like the canon triplex. A canon is a strict system where a melody chases itself according to precise rules. With this, Bach wasn't just engaging in a dialogue with Misler. He was proving that the most profound musical science was practical, not theoretical. It was proof that the most sublime order was achieved through the mastery of a logical musical system, a system that, for him, was a form of prayer. Now let's analyze Bach's central mechanism, counterpoint. In this section, I will show you how he treated a melody as if it were a geometric shape, applying a series of predictable, logical transformations to build immense structures from a single idea. The starting point is a subject, a short melody that functions like a mathematical axiom. From this axiom, Bach applied logical operations. These operations are analogous to geometric transformations, translation or transposition. The most basic operation, it moves the melody to a different pitch, higher or lower, but its internal pattern of intervals remains identical. Horizontal reflection or inversion. Imagine a mirror placed horizontally above the melody. Every interval that goes up in the original goes down in its reflection, and vice versa. Vertical reflection, or retrograde. Now, imagine the mirror at the end of the melody. It is played backwards from the last note to the first, like a palindrome. Dilation, or augmentation, diminution. This alters the time scale. In augmentation, the duration of each note is doubled, making the theme slower while preserving its shape. The clearest example of this system in action is the art of fugue, specifically contrapunctus 12 and 13. They are a pair of mirror fugues. The second fugue is the complete and exact melodic inversion of the first. Every note in every voice that went up in the first piece goes down in the second by the same intervallic magnitude. This is not an approximation. It is perfect geometric symmetry on a grand scale, proof of a system operating with rigorous, predictable logic. Next, we will explore a layer of design that is not always audible, but is verifiable in the score. Bach used numerology, specifically a system called gematria, to embed a symbolic language into his works. In this system, common in his time, each letter of the alphabet corresponds to a number. Using the German alphabet, Bach's surname adds up to 14 Neubar, BE2, APAR1, CE3, H D8. His initials and surname, JS Back, add up to 41. These numbers are not an interpretation. They are structural elements that Bach deliberately inserted. For example, the main collection of the Art of Fugue consists of exactly 14 fugues. The frequency of these numbers is too high to be coincidental. The irrefutable proof is in the final fugue of that same work, where the main theme is built on the notes. 
flat, A, C, B, natural, which in German notation are named B, A, C, H. He was literally writing his own name in the melody. Furthermore, the presence of the golden ratio, approximately 1.618, a number associated in art and nature with perfect formal balance, has been observed in the temporal structure of his works. In many of his pieces, the most important formal divisions occur at the measure that corresponds to the golden section of the total number of measures. While it is debated whether this was a conscious calculation or the product of a genius with an unerring sense of proportion, the presence of this mathematical relationship is an observable analytical fact that contributes to the perception of architectural balance in his music. Now, let's analyze Bach's music through a modern lens, that of 21st century science, to reveal a property he himself could not have known. In this section, I will explain why his music, despite its rigor, is perceived as profoundly organic, and the answer lies in fractal geometry. A fractal is a pattern that repeats itself at different scales. The clearest example is a fern, where the shape of each small leaf is a miniature replica of the entire branch. This is the geometry that describes the complexity of natural systems, trees, rivers, snowflakes. They are not simple shapes, they are fractally complex. Computational analyses of Bach's scores have conclusively shown that his music exhibits the same property. The rhythmic pattern of a single measure is replicated on a larger scale in the structure of entire phrases. This fractal nature was not intentional. It is what is known as an emergent property. It is the inevitable result of his working method, taking a small melodic seed and systematically developing it through repetition and transformation at increasingly complex levels. This process mimics the growth logic of the natural world. Therefore, the logical rigor of his method is precisely the mechanism that generates an aesthetic quality we perceive as organic and alive. The mathematics of the fractal unifies the perfection of his design with the vitality of its effect. Finally, we will address one of the most extraordinary qualities of his music, its ability to work on any instrument at any speed. Why is it so flexible? In this last section, I will explain that the cause is the informational robustness of its structure, a concept we can understand thanks to modern information theory. A system is robust if its core message remains intact, even when transmitted through a noisy or varied channel. In Bach's music, the structure of relationships between the notes is the message. The performance, the instrument's timbre, the tempo, is the channel. Bach's message survives any channel. Why? First, because his scores are often abstract, without specifying instrumentation. The identity of the work is its logical skeleton, not its sonic skin. Second, a 2024 study in physical review research modeled his music as an information network and quantitatively confirmed its robustness. It was found that his structure is so efficient and clear that a listener's mind can reconstruct the logical map of the piece with extremely high accuracy, making very few errors, regardless of the performance variations. This is because the network of notes has hubs, very important nodes, and highly coherent local patterns. Therefore, Bach's legendary flexibility is not a mystery. It is a direct consequence of a mathematically superior structural design.